welcome back to Blackout, House of Bob's cyberpunk adventure set in the Vantal Megaplex and powered by the Sprawl RPG system. Hi, I'm Christina, and I'm playing Olivia Crow, who's on the run for Mass Corp while trying to figure out who's friend and who's foe. This is Schubert. I'll be playing Bunk, the cyberfunky audio junkie, packing beats on the Vantal streets. My name is Alex. I'll be playing Garrett, conspiracy theorist, wildcard, senior citizen. I'm Dan. I'll be playing Tiz, the hard-nosed reporter, tracking down corruption no matter the cost. And I'm Jake, your GM. If you want to support the show, check us out on Patreon, give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts, or just tell your friends about us. Roll on. During the last episode, you all were preparing for your meeting with Nickel. You went shopping for some new gear, you recruited some muscle and or meat shields, you added a tracker to the sentry drone, and you made your way to the stadium where you told her to meet you. Bunk's contact Max Q let you in and you began to set up shop, but shortly thereafter you begin to receive a torrent of messages to your personal devices, all from Nickel. And they read as follows. Why do you always insist on making things difficult? You don't understand what's going on here, what your place in this world is. You're not playing by the rules. You don't get to make demands. You're disposable. You're replaceable. You don't get to call the shots or mouth off. You're immaterial. Irrelevant. What's the plan? (laughs) Well, first I have to absorb that information. Yeah, Yeah. first I'm going to cry a little. (laughs) So how do we we reply? Uh, Do we reply just with the letter K or do we like send a minion GIF back? I think we just leave it on red. Okay. <laughs> well, I think, no, what we should do is have the typing message thing <laughs> typing forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So she's just waiting. <laughs> the evil mastermind. Yeah. And then after like an hour, just reply ditto. <laughs> we reply, yes, it's still available. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's good. Go with that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll, uh, we'll check back in in an hour. <laughs> but yeah, well, well, what's the plan here in the stadium? Kind of where are you guys setting up? What are you doing while you wait? What are you asking of your various hirelings? Where's the drone? I just want to get a picture of what this looks like. All right. Does anyone want to be like the point of contact? Like the person who's going to be like face to face with Nickel? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I think it should be Garrett because Garrett can't die. Mm. Even when you're far away, you're going to get shot. <laughs> I'm just, just telling you that now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Garrett's invincible, so. But Nickel loves to shoot him from far away, is all I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> you want to be close. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm. Mm. Hmm. You want to get as close as you can get, Garrett. Well, I mean, my plan was for Garrett to, like, hide up in the box seats with his, like, fancy new sniper rifle. Ooh, ah. They're going to shoot her from afar. That's right. Turn the tables. The turntables. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> turn the turntables. <laughs> we can win. Yeah. We can win. We can win. <laughs> We're always turning. It's funny that way. Oh, boy. <laughs> How <are> the turntables? <laughs> I mean, I'm willing to be down in the trenches, as it were. I'll have your back from a distance. <laughs> Just don't shoot my back, but thank you. <laughs> I kind of want to be like the person on the microphone, maybe. Mm. For like Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Yeah, the announcer person. <laughs> Announcing for what? <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. uh, I was just gonna, I was just gonna do the AV stuff, you know, lights and. I thought we had like a a minion for that. Did we? Okay. Yeah. Well, we have three minions. One helped us with hacking. Well, we had talked about daring Ned doing that. But it makes more sense for Daring Ned to like hide in a dugout so he can like jump out and no, punch we have someone. three nerds. <laughs> oh yeah, your dude. you have the electronics shop nerds. Yeah, right. Is that offensive or is that just accurate? They're taking it back. Right, right. They're taking it back, and I'm like, whatever, nerds, get over it. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, you're goddamn right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, own it. <laughs> Yeah, so one of us, one of them helped us with hacking, so he's probably unavailable, probably, or used up. <laughs> Exhausted. <laughs> and discarded. Used up. <laughs> he, he was the daily, yeah. <laughs> and then I thought one was going to be on, like, lights and AV. Okay, so he'll, he'll run the, uh, 
the PowerPoint presentation I've I've set up. Mm-hmm. Full of Nichols murder victims. He'll teach you how to use the the clicker to switch to the slides. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe yeah. maybe Olivia, if you're you're going to be down on the ground floor, maybe you should have the clicker. <laughs> oh, that's too much power. You're going to have to wear a turtleneck. What if I go though? too fast? <laughs> a turtleneck. Okay. Yeah. Are you doing like a TED talk now? I think we're doing a sad talk. <laughs> Oh, I to... thought like a keynote presentation. No, I was going for yeah. a Steve Jobs kind of look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keynote. Yeah. It's a go. keynote presentation on how terrible Nickel is. Mm-hmm. She's going to love that. It's going <laughs> to revolutionize the murder industry. Oh, yeah. That's what the third person was doing. They were, they were filming for us. I think that was the whole right. thing. You can tell it's been a while <laughs> since we played. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to remember what exactly our plan was. Our plan was to make people feel bad for us. <laughs> was, was that part of it? Done. <laughs> <laughs> I already woke up this morning, so and hope that they that they arrest Nickel, I think was kind of her whole thing. Or stop her. Who's gonna arrest her though? Mm, I don't Is, know. The people watching the streams? It's like a citizen's arrest. Our pa- our Patreons. <laughs> <laughs> our Patreon <laughs> I want to know what our outcome is. I don't think anyone's going to arrest her, but like if we live stream this, maybe we can like shame her into leaving. There's also that whole thing where like, you know, if things go really bad for us, hopefully someone will be watching and they can come like pick us up and like put our <laughs> guts back in and stuff. Do we have anybody like that? I feel like the you only people out who there. would do that are the four of us and we're ready. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, you, just, you just put it out there, stream it and they will come. Okay. Olivia, are you still a wanted terrorist? I'm just a little. Not not a wanted terrorist. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't be like the face person then. I I feel like I look different enough at this point, but Maybe, mm-hmm. I don't know. They never got like a good look at me, I don't think. I can be the face person if you guys want, but whoever the face person is is going to get shot. Oh, I for think, sure. I think and we also all we know can that. have more than one person now. <laughs> There doesn't do one person. <laughs> yeah, there are two dugouts, right? There's a dugout on each side. Mm-hmm. Why isn't Daring Ned the face person? Because <laughs> he's not one of us. That would be two NPCs talking to each yeah. other. Yeah, <laughs> he could be wearing bunk gear. Also, no, like, he just showed up. He doesn't know our <gasps> grievances. Oh, that's actually a good point because, like, bunk wears a mask all the time, mm-hmm. so we could like dress up daring Ned right. and then uh, he is and famous then we could... for having two mechanical arms I remember mm, well, <laughs> and he's like you know, massive she, yeah. she wears sleeves <laughs> yeah. the silhouettes don't quite match up <laughs> right mm-hmm. yeah. I was going to say we could do that thing where you like talk into an earpiece and so he yeah okay never mind Cyrano de Bergerac I get it I guess it's not a first date situation but I mean from afar he might look like me I still think he should dress up as me. I just don't think it'll help. Yeah. I mean, why not? But I, I think it's a good idea yeah. still. <laughs> yeah. I think bunk being the face man is perfectly fine. Maybe we can have Olivia hiding off to the side with her net gun. Maybe our plan is to take in Nickel alive or something like that. Yeah, we'll like bottleneck her into the stadium. Is that why you bought a sword? Yeah, with my sword. <laughs> I have a sword, remember? Oh, right. I'm pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, when Bunk sees you, all you guys coming back with all the weapons that you bought, he just like like shakes his head. Yeah, and then I put on my shades. No. Yeah. No, this is not going to work. Oh, okay. No, um, no. You get another <laughs> blast of messages on your various devices. Okay. What do they say? The more you struggle, the more the world pushes back, the more harm you cause to everyone around you. Your clients, your colleagues, your friends, they've all suffered because you won't fall in line and play nice. You've had so many chances to realize this and accept it. Even still, they wanted to give you another chance, and how did you return the favor? Somehow, you just keep getting lucky. I don't understand how you manage to keep getting in my way, how street scum like yourselves are causing me so much trouble still. You're just a, a terrified little script kitty desperately hanging on to his deteriorating morals and a dumpster diving crook who doesn't belong anywhere. A hack journalist who pretends to be good and pure, but he's just as broken as everyone else in a Facebook comment section that wished to be a real boy. How is this even still an issue for me? This should have been dealt with ages ago. Hey, send her the emoji of the shrugging face. <laughs> yeah, definitely. 
She could be a word assassin. Jeez. <laughs> As you're cutting to the bone. <laughs> She should start a blog about ripping people a new one. I think she might be projecting a little bit. Oh, 100% oh, yeah. she is. I mean, she's not wrong, but she's also like... A shitty person. Yeah, exactly. Not looking in the mirror. Exactly. It's also rude, you know? Yeah, no hello. Yeah. Like, come on. Also rude. She never asks if we want to be shot. She just does it. <laughs> Yeah, she asks for forgiveness, not permission. Yeah, she's asking, where are you, but not how are you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I like that Maybe one. Maybe that's, uh, well, to be fair, neither have we. We sort of murdered her partner and haven't asked, hey, how are you doing, friend? <laughs> sort of. No. Was, I mean, <laughs> murdered them because she shot, uh, shot yeah. Garrett. But yeah. If anything, that was a reaction to what she did. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying we, we also aren't reaching out in an emotional right. way. Oh, that's what I send back. I'm like, it's your fault Bailey's dead. Send. Whoa. Oh my God. Harsh. I, I pop in with, this does not reflect my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> it's my phone. <laughs> I can say what I want. <laughs> We're all getting messages. Yeah, though. you're in the group message. Yeah. Garrett replies with like a book face poker invite. <laughs> So I'll, I'll remind you guys of something we talked about uh, off screen or off screen, off the air. You guys know that there's a very fine line between Nickel cooperating in this and not. And any taunts right. that you guys do I are know, very not, likely to push her over the so edge. It's so hard if, not to, though. If that's what you want to do, that's fine. But just know that it's going to change how this plays out. That's all these guys have ever done. It's not what I want to do. It's just what comes natural. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Poking the bear is what we do. Yeah. 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 It's just, it's going to happen. Like, I've come to accept it. Okay, so let's get, let's look at this plan rolling. All right. I'll put Bunks my phone on, on mute because I'm not making anything better. Bunk's on, yeah, I don't think you should be there. <laughs> Bunk is the face man. I am. We're going to be hiding in the dugouts. Yeah. And then Garrett is up in the up in the air. Box seats. And also your drone. I can be beside Bunk, but I'll be like, I'll be running the PowerPoint from there. Okay. So we'll be on the sidelines. I'm going to try to look for maybe somewhere I can have a good vantage point though, because she's not coming alone. Mm. Yeah. So our tech guys, they can run like maybe they can set off alarms or something maybe, or they can mess with the big stadium lights. And we do have max Q on call. I think, right. You were able to convince him, I think last session. Yeah, I mean, he's he's ready to You told him you would pay for drive everything. his <laughs> monster truck into something. Yeah, perfect. That, that's a very niche thing though. I feel like we might need uh more I than just that. if it happens, <laughs> I want to be able to hitch a ride on that. <laughs> uh okay. I think we are in position. What is our best case outcome that we want to achieve, I guess? One dead nickel. <laughs> And no uh, dead us. Well, no dead us for sure. I like the no dead us part. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I would like to apprehend Nickel personally, but I, you know, <laughs> I don't know if we're going to be able to to do that. But if I would like that to be maybe our first try. Yeah, like a citizen's arrest kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. A citizen's shock in a net. Okay. If, <laughs> if that's our best case scenario, what's like our middle ground? That Nickel's dead and we're not dead. Okay. Worst case scenario, we're dead, but Nickel's not dead. Or she walks away. Second worst case scenario, half of us are dead, she's half dead. <laughs> I would think that would be better than the other one. <laughs> <laughs> so let's try a more reasonable approach first, as best as we can. Let's, let's, <laughs> just, that let's just talk and see where it goes. And see how it escalates, I guess. Yeah, I could like fire my you know special sniper rifle like near her feet to like sort of guide her towards you so you can shoot the net at her mm. like when they say dance in movies and shoot at oh, your feet and stuff yeah i expect you to say that no nobody will hear me from the box seats but i'm gonna say it that's why we gave you your lapel mic so you can say that into the <laughs> announcement jake would i have like a list of people nickel have killed has killed I think you, we did like a research or something last time and you have, I've got a note here that says dirt on nickel colon two. <laughs> yeah, I I had done some research 
specifically that it was just we can use it anytime specifically about nickel. Yeah, I'm just wondering if I have the actual names. You've got two fun facts about nickel, whatever you want those to be. Yeah, so they can <laughs> be fun facts about murder victims. Yeah. I just don't feel like, I don't know, personally, I don't think that affects her at all. <laughs> like, she obviously doesn't care about feeling bad about her, her job choices. Mm-hmm. Okay, what, what could our fun facts? Well, eh, we'll pull them out when we need them. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I'm ready. Favorite brand of peanut butter? Okay. So some something worse than just murdering random clients. Mm-hmm. Maybe we can find something that actually matters to her, <laughs> other than Bailey. <gasps> Maybe she has a child. Oh. Bum, bum, bum. I think she, wouldn't she know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's well, a good point. <laughs> now we know. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> I did read a story once where. <laughs> A girl got like C-sectioned and she didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> Nickel, you're pregnant and the child's oh. mine. <laughs> oh, maybe, maybe one of your fun facts can be like an email draft that Bailey had put together about like, you know, wanting to break up the band that never got sent for, you know, we. I did have uh, Bailey's comms unit. So. It's plausible. We could whip that out and, you know, do some, some guilt tripping if need be. Yeah, maybe we found some recordings before they became mute. They were able to talk in that video that we saw. Did we actually see that or was that just yeah. a... Okay, <laughs> that was just an audience one. No, so we saw that. Yeah, so there was a time when they they spoke. So the other question, where is the drone? In the air. It does not fly. Flying oh. around like it just don't care. Oh. You're the, the sentry drone. Yeah, the sphere. It doesn't. Oh, oh that one. Okay. <laughs> I thought you meant a sniper drone thing. The, the whole reason right. this is happening. <laughs> I'll just carry it. Yeah, okay. it's with it's with Bonk, I'm pretty sure. Down in the trenches, that is the stadium. Yeah, keep it in front of you so she doesn't like shoot you point blank in the chest. Yeah, that's basically what I'm doing is using it as a body shield. Hmm. I wish I had a shield. <laughs> Should have bought a shield. Bought that in, yeah, instead of a sword. <laughs> your shields are your words. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, ha- I have my sword out so I can uh, deflect okay. bullets. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> the pen is mightier than the shield. You have your PowerPoint presentation pointer, so mm-hmm. you'll be fine. Yeah, It's all good. It's my secret okay. weapon. Are you ready to roll, guys? Yeah, I'm ready. We never were. Open the <laughs> gates. <laughs> I was never more ready than this moment, which is pretty bad because I'm not ready. Uh, <laughs> let's do this. I'm literally just going to hand her the sphere and be like, I'm sorry about everything. Please mm-hmm. take this and don't murder us. That's that's my game plan. Sounds good. But then the bot tries to murder her. But we also have a tracking thing on there, too. But yeah, but she's not actually going to try to take it. She's just going to try to kill us all before then, even. So it'll be fine. We have some, <laughs> we'll figure some it out. backups on our backups, is all I'm saying. The robot may not actually kill her. We don't know yet. We just kind of showed it a picture and said, <laughs> kill. Yeah, she may have changed her hairstyle or parted it a different way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. So to summarize, we've got Bunk and Tiss kind of in, in the middle of the stadium. I imagine one of the spotlights focused down on them. And they've got the little silver sphere. We're standing at the top of one of those ramps. Sure. I'm hiding in the sidelines. Yeah, Olivia is around the backside of the ramp or something like that, somewhere where the, she would be able to pop into action quickly if need be. Same with Daring Ned. Garrett is up in one of the box seats uh, with his fancy new rifle and his little spotter drone is hovering around above the stadium. And then we have the tech guys doing tech stuff. Max Q waiting in the distance. Yeah, yeah. revving his engine. Behind a garage door. You guys got to tell me what you want the NPCs to do and when, so. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sacrifice yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't mean they're going to do it, but you have to tell me what you want them to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Destin Freeberg, the head of design at Epistle Communications. If you're like me, you're tired of having to defend yourself from gun toting gangers and knife wielding cyborgs every time you step outside your gated community. With the proliferation of dermal plating and smart gun technology, traditional weapon systems just can't cut the mustard anymore. That's why I developed the brand new Portable Payload Articulator. The lightweight, shoulder-mounted, AI-assisted, fully wireless, nuclear, battery-powered, explosive ammunition launcher for the everyday, average consumer. Finally! 
the power to defend yourself at a price that won't cost you a kidney. Pre-order yours today and you'll receive a free year's subscription to Epistle Plus, the only all-you-can-shoot ammunition service in Vandal that delivers right to your doorstep. So you guys got your eyes on the front entrance of the stadium there. But after several tense moments, you hear footsteps coming from kind of the side of the stadium, actually. And you see Nicola emerge from behind a row of trashed cars. Her arms crossed in front of gray camo armored combat gear and an impatient glare. And two braided buns of lustrous platinum hair. She changed her hair. (laughs) (laughs) She has a different hair every time you've seen her, by the way. So (laughs) we haven't anticipated this at all. We should have known. (laughs) She's still a fair distance away from the two of you, but sees you up at the top of the ramp and speaks loudly enough for you to hear. You should know this is your absolute last chance. And you're only getting it because they asked me to. You give me the drone, you get in your van, and then you drive away. You disappear. You never show your faces in the city again, and you can live out your meaningless lives however you want. What the fuck do I care? But Lord help me, a single slip up from any of you, and I will not hold back no matter what they asked. And her hands grip tightly onto her upper arms, barely controlled rage in her eyes. She wants us to do something, I think. All right, Bunk steps forward with the drone in his hands, and he kind of holds it out, and he just says, Okie doke. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> all right well bunk you start to take a few tentative steps towards nickel and begin to hold out the drone and you you can feel the the weight inside of it start to shift and then the the bottom half begin to rotate and you sense that it's beginning to activate given its pre-programmed commands there are you gonna let it do its thing or what are you doing I'm gonna quickly throw my jacket my very flashy jacket that i'm wearing <laughs> over it throw it over the sphere just so it can't see nickel and hopefully she won't notice that Maybe we'll get you to act under pressure then, because sure. obviously it's, that was a weird thing that just happened. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a little awkward. <laughs> just nine. So you quickly try to throw your jacket over top of the drone to block its vision and stop it from activating. And it, it's just ob- a very obviously awkward move. And Nickel kind of like, <laughs> you, you just sense that moment's hesitation, thinking that something must be a little up here. And they direct you to put the sentry on the ground. Bunk does so. He's being totally compliant. Uh Uh-oh. Yes, ma'am. Once you're down at the bottom of the ramp, Nickel says, what's with the jacket? (laughs) Uh, Well, I tried fiddling around with it a bit, and it, uh, it seems to be acting up a little, so I just, I wouldn't trust it. So, you know, I'm sure you have good people that you can bring it to, but maybe just keep it covered until then. Let's not take any chances. She reaches to her side and pulls out a... It looks like a, like kind of like a blaster rifle, not dissimilar to the EMP blaster that you've used before. And she points it at the drone. And it looks like she's about to fire unless anybody reacts. Do we want her to do this? She's going to fire on the drone? Yeah, we kind of want the drone. She's just going to fire a, like an EMP shot at it. Yeah. Like deactivate it. Oh, okay. It. Mm-hmm. I mean... I'm not worried. Yeah, that's she can fine. do that. that yeah. That's totally fine. If she's still being peaceful and takes it, that's my plan. So Okay, I'm going to follow Bunk's lead and see where this goes. Okay. There's kind of an electric hum as the blaster powers up, and then two blue bolts of electricity fly out at the drone. I mean, very similar to when you first encountered the drone, it, it seems to be pretty susceptible to this kind of attack, and it kind of flails around a little bit, and its legs kick up in the air, and then it slumps to the ground. Oh, man. Why didn't I think of that? (laughs) (laughs) I pick back up my jacket, dust it off. And there's just a little bit of heat and smoke rising from the uh, sentry. Okay. And she motions with her gun towards you, Bunk, and basically just, you know, back away. All right. I back away. All right. I don't plan on leaving town, though. No, me neither. That's my (laughs) issue. (laughs) That's the only... Part of this whole thing that it's not going to work out. She steps towards the sentry drone. Do you want to make a, maybe an assess check? Sure. Just seven. Okay. She reaches down and when her hand connects with one of the little legs of the sentry, there's just a little like static shock, like a little bit of 
shimmering energy, just the tiniest little bit. But then it fades just as quickly as it did, and she grabs it by the leg and starts kind of walking backwards, dragging it behind her. She's got some sort of crazy body armor. Oh, yeah. Garrett sends a text to Olivia and asks, Mm -hmm. are you still going to try to trap her? If we're going to do it, now's the only time. Yes. (laughs) I message one of the tech guys and I'm like, play the video or (laughs) presentation. (laughs) PowerPoint. 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 (laughs) I really like that idea that it was a video or a voice thing of Bailey. And that's where it starts. Sure. Talking about Nickel maybe as her partner to like somebody at a pistol like a debrief or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Bailey is doing their you know annual performance review or right. something and they're being asked questions about their partner. Yeah, yeah, exactly like that. Because I think that'll get her attention. <laughs> <laughs> and Bailey's gonna say something really mean about Nickel. Yeah, Nicole. that's what I'm hoping, but we'll see, I guess. I do think that would throw <laughs> her off guard, so I like it. The Jumbotron on the far side of the stadium lights up and there's a video there of like a kind of cold office room with just a single desk in the middle. The large, intimidating form of Bailey barely fitting onto the chair, kind of overflowing the chair. The video is shot from like a small camera on the table so we don't see the person that's interviewing them. It's just pointed at Bailey. The voice from behind the camera says... And what about your partner, Nickel? Bailey seems to think for a little bit and mulls it over, then replies, she's, she's different than she used to be. She's dangerous. And it scares me sometimes. And the video cuts out there. And you look back at Nickel you see that kind of barely, barely controlled rage start to simmer and, you know, threaten to boil over. And she looks at the two of you and says, what the fuck is this? What are you doing? We thought you'd like to know the truth of what Bailey really thought of you. You know, everyone wants to know that, right? What do you think you know about them? You don't know them. Why do you keep doing this? She's on the edge. Whatever you say next is definitely going to decide (laughs) how the rest of this goes (laughs) it's because you won't stop chasing us every everything we do you seem to have some sort of connection to and you're not involved with good people like these are terrible people and you keep playing for the bad guys every time i just whisper yeah yeah and what's your objective with that tis Mm-hmm. Hurt her feelings. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm just laying down the hard truth. Well, I mean, it kind of sounds like, I mean, we want her to like face her own demons, essentially. Yeah, exactly. Like uh, almost like I guess give up to us. <laughs> if she faces her own demons, what do you think the result is going to be, or what do you want the result to be? I want her to quit her job <laughs> and leave town, no. <laughs> quit her bad life, and leave us alone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Leave us alone. Basically, I want her to, like, pack it in. Go do something else with your life. If even your your closest confidant thinks you're scary and untrustworthy, that's got to set you off in a weird way. I don't really have a planned objective. I'm just kind of talking and seeing how she <laughs> reacts. <laughs> that's all we ever do. Like, if she wants to come at us with, with rage, that's fine if she doesn't that's fine too i figure like you want to psych her out you know and then while she's psyched out she might not be paying attention and like olivia can shoot the net no, and, Gar- no. i think our goals are slightly different than garrett <laughs> <laughs> yeah, garrett's like aiming up his shot right now <laughs> yeah. oh no he's been like aimed since nickel walked into the stadium i would hope so you say the word like Head confetti. I don't think anything's going to happen. She's got a shield on. Yeah. Just why don't you uh, do a fast talk then style? We'll, we'll give you a plus one because you're acting on the information that yeah. you have. Six. <laughs> oh, <no>. <laughs> <laughs> and things go badly from here. <laughs> Just because it was a failure doesn't mean I like don't get the reaction I want. I mean, like, you're provoking a reaction no matter what. Yeah, right? it's, it's what the reaction was. 
You're a loose cannon, Nickel. <laughs> Turn in your badge and gun. <laughs> and she says, you don't know anything about how this shit works. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know my life. And you don't know what's going on and what's about to happen here. You have pushed your luck again and again. And it's going to catch up to you. I message to the tech guys. I'm like... Begin the PowerPoint. <laughs> Part two. <laughs> yeah. PowerPoint. PowerPoint. Power and then I start my recording, my own recording. The Jumbotron lights up again, and this time with images of various fixers and hackers and gangers and all the various crooks and criminals and people that she's dealt with. Can you put up like the innocent ones first? <laughs> yeah. Or like by order of innocence. Yeah, I don't want to make her look like Batman. Like. <laughs> Start with like stole a candy bar. Yeah, it did make it sound like she was taking out all these bad people. But like the hackers and criminals are like good people. They're like people like Pam and like Joseph that yeah. didn't do yeah. anything it's, wrong. Yeah, exactly. It's not and I mean it's people like you, right? And people in the line of work that you do who, you know, by strict definitions of the way the society works are not good people or not innocent, I suppose. But, I mean, obviously you guys see that different, right? It's a matter of perspective. We're still humans. They're, they're in the game. <laughs> yeah. They're in the game, but they're still good. Yeah. Are we mm-hmm. the baddies? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Now's not no. the time to be asking backfires on you guys. <laughs> <laughs> she grabs that pistol at her side again. The EMP one? Yeah, the the same weapon she used to shoot at the sentry. But she she actually presses a button on the side and the kind of electrical hum dissipates and it kind of folds a little smaller Uh in on itself. And then she points it up at the jumbotron and fires several times. And, you know, with a a shower of sparks, the screens shatter. I'm like, damn it, we worked so hard on that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Then she points it back at you, Tiss, and That's it fair. does not look like she wants to talk any longer. You've got maybe a moment to react here. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm standing on hold, the ramp. Hold the line. What are we holding for? What the fuck? You no, get not you, Garrett. <laughs> <laughs> Why is he holding? <laughs> that would be a good time for shooting. Because we do. Okay. We're not. <laughs> oh, she's literally about to shoot me. Her finger is pulling towards the trigger. Yep. Okay. okay. Garrett pulls the trigger. Yep. And I jump backwards he fires, down the ramp. He fires at Nickel's hand to try to disarm her, not oh to like take her down. I hope you have a good roll. <laughs> <laughs> if you shoot the gun, that's probably not covered by the shield. So that might work. Yeah, some stuff that you're gonna say covered by the warranty. <laughs> <laughs> that too. It's not a blanket warranty. Yeah. No, we got the epistle care. It's okay. <laughs> I, I don't think you need to roll. You had the uh, the, the jump, so to speak. You had the drop and the yeah, and the targeting drone as well. Well, actually, let, let, let's have you roll. You're gonna hit, but we'll we'll see if you okay. hit you know exactly where you wanted to or not. What is this meat? Yeah, meat. Yeah. Oh! Yeah. That sounds That's good. A Thirteen, which means okay. it's a natural twelve. So, <laughs> so her hand Boom. just explodes. <laughs> From one of the box seats, there's a loud bang and a shatter of the window, and this bullet streaks across the stadium and right into Nichols' hand. And there's a again kind of a shimmer of energy and a sparking. And you see that the bullet is impacted into a mechanical hand. Oh. That kind of energy field seems to recede and envelops the body for a second before fading away and disappearing. And you see a robotic form there. Do we recognize this robotic form? (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God. Did she just send in like a droid? Is she somewhere else in the stadium? Tiss roll, act under pressure. (laughs) I told you she's not coming alone. (laughs) Oh, no. I mean, we knew she wasn't coming alone, but we didn't think she would put a robot version of herself in. Yeah, I guess that's true. We didn't know she was going to teach you us or whatever. I mean, fuck. (laughs) We can still stop her from getting what she wants, though. The robot hand sparks, and again, the the shield disappears, and the robot kind of stumbles forward onto the ground and falls face forward. It's just like a very basic, simple shell in a humanoid shape looks like, you know, basically just designed to house this hologram and then interact with things. But it doesn't have any other features of, on its own. Uh, I rolled a seven. So from one of the other box rooms, another shot rings out. 
Oh no! And, for... <laughs> and it hits oh, no. I heard that from like a distance too. And just <laughs> oh no! <laughs> no, you're in the clear this time, Garrett. Tiss, you feel a sharp and almost overwhelming pain as a bullet rips through your leg. I thought you were going to deflect it with your sword. <laughs> <laughs> I try. <laughs> take three arm. Okay, I have armor, so I'll take the two. And then well, I have to roll meat, don't I? Uh, yeah, you roll uh, harm. Your harm roll. Which is plus the amount of damage you actually took. So roll plus low. two. Roll low. Low, low, low. Six. Okay, so no further effects. You just take the three harm. You just have a bullet in you. No further <laughs> effects. Cool. <laughs> Not the first bullet I've had in me. It won't be the last. <laughs> Probably, if we survive this. No, knowing point. how this fight's about to go. It's definitely not going to be the last. Yeah, so because I'm hopefully still <laughs> in the shadow or concealed from her vision, yeah. I want to send a message to one of the AV guys to start using the video cameras in the, uh, in the arena because we need to find her. Oh, sure. Yeah. Cool. That's a good idea. I like that. Yeah. Absolutely. They're up in one of the little tech booths there and uh, uh, they bring up the security camera systems. They, they, they cycle through it and send you a message back that they've found her in one of the box seats in the upper levels of the stadium. If Garrett's on the, you know, at six o'clock, she's at nine o'clock. Of course. Okay. Okay. I also tell one of them to kill the spotlight that's on me and Bunk. Sure. Yeah, they do so. Where were we situated? Like when I say we bunk Tiss and then I was like kind of there, but not right next to them in regards to that nine o'clock. You guys were here. Yeah, that'd be good. Oh, stadium. That's a stadium. Yeah. For the listeners at home, we're seeing an oval. <laughs> <laughs> with a If you can nipple. imagine that. Yeah. With, and with clock numbers on it. With a scary looking areola in the middle. <laughs> A scariola, if you prefer. <laughs> I, I don't prefer that. So the, no, it stays. I don't think anyone does. <laughs> the circle in the middle is where you guys were having your little meeting, so to speak. Okay, okay. Garrett was back at number six there. So we're somewhat in the center. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay, I'm going to now wave Ned to come with me, and I want us to try to make a mad dash to... To 12 o'clock opening, because we need to get upstairs. Sure. So, like, 12 o'clock would be kind of the front entrance to the stadium, so to speak. Mm -hmm. There would be, you know, like, side entrances if you were just trying to get back into the stands. I don't want to go towards hers directly, because I feel like Nickel would just spot us right okay. away. So, I'm hoping that she's still disoriented enough that maybe we can at least get across <laughs> without her sure. seeing us or knowing exactly where we're going. Okay. So, yeah, Olivia and Daring Ned... Because that also give up the spot that we know where she is. <laughs> right. Yeah. And and you guys can c continue to like run behind the ramps. Mm -hmm. The cars mm -hmm. and ramps. The cars and ramps. So yeah, you guys start heading north behind the ramps towards the front entrance, hoping to then work your way up to the uh, box seats. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna send a message to Bunk. I'm like, hey Bunk, can you get Max Q to take out this this robot or this whatever this droid thing is? The robot actually seems to have just fallen on its face and it's not moving. Okay. So yes, I would very easily be. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think that'll help. All right. <laughs> I was thinking we either can destroy this drone that she wants mm. to get her hands on and just be like, you did this to yourself. Or we <laughs> get, I just want to get Max Q in here somehow. But I was thinking he could either. You guys can hitch a ride. That's exactly yeah. what I was thinking. He could pick yeah. me and Bunk up and he could drive us up the stadium, like through the stands. Yes. I want this yes. to happen. <laughs> and just get us, like, closer. So we're kind of in the middle of the stadium, so I think uh, I could maybe call him to drive out, come pick us up, and then we can start driving up the stands towards Nickel. While I'm waiting for this, I'm going to fire a shot into the drone. Wait, the sphere or the, the sphere. Her robot self? No, the sphere. <laughs> I'm getting confused. There's so many drones. But, yeah, <laughs> her hologram drone. The hollow bot is down, right? The holobot is down. Yeah. But I was okay. actually thinking with the sphere, we could just turn it back on again and it would start targeting Nickel, like if we want. She impeded it, though. Yeah, it might be out of know, order for a bit. Yeah. It might not be impossible, but it You could can be, try to fix it, though. Yeah, it would take work. I was just thinking, like, maybe we shouldn't okay. destroy it. Let's just toss it in the in the bed of the truck, then. I don't know if it has much of a bed. 
this monster well, truck. <laughs> we, we, I, I sit it in between us in, the, the, in the cab. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sure we can find a spot for this sphere. I sit yeah. on it like an egg. <laughs> Keep it warm. You're going to like fall, fly off with all the bunk. <laughs> bunk is going to call up Max Q and just say, we need you, Max. Got to hitch a ride. Yeah. And I just uh, drop a, a ping to our exact locations. Yeah. I mean, I don't think you had him too far off. I imagine no. it was, you know, up along one side of the bleachers is the, you know, just like the lineup of trucks and they were all turned off. But then suddenly, you know, the crater maker, the lights flash to life. There's the, you know, echoing roar of the engine that he revs up and it starts driving towards you guys. Sounds beautiful. Bunk runs over and grabs the sentry and starts pulling it towards the crater maker. And we'll get a one more act under pressure from you guys, just because there's a bit of time for Crater Maker to get over there and pick you up. Am I rolling this, or both of us? Let's do bunk. Okay, sure. I rolled a three. Yeah. No. Oh, uh oh. You run over to the drone, and in that moment that you're not moving, when you have to reach down to grab the sentry, you get hit. So it's three harm, and roll the harm move, please. Oh, I'm getting sniped now. Yep. Yep. Oh, damn. I mean, she doesn't want us to have it. Five plus two is seven. Oh, oh no. no. MC will choose one. You lose your footing. You lose your grip on whatever you're holding. You lose track of someone or something or someone gets the drop on you. I'm going to twist that a little bit. I'm going to choose someone gets the drop on you, but I'm going to get the drop on someone else instead. Oh, oh. that's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Tiz looks to camera. <laughs> this is like the other day when my car got blown up and then somebody else rolled bad. And then all of a sudden there was like an evil guy looking at me or something. <laughs> One to three, Garrett. Four to six, Olivia. Okay. Oh, no. I got it, too. No! <laughs> Garrett, you hear someone banging on the uh, the door to the box seat that you're in. Oh, fuck. It sounds like someone with, you know, like a little portable ram, essentially. <laughs> what? <laughs> right. So how far of a jump down is it from the box seats oh to like God. the nosebleeds? <laughs> For your old bones? Garrett. <laughs> yeah. Garrett, you know exactly where yeah. this guy is. Why don't you just shoot through the door? Yeah, actually, that's a good point. <laughs> Yeah, don't just break your legs. Oh, man. <laughs> you know what? You're right. Garrett You're right. Fear and then kills himself. <laughs> Garrett spins around and then fires his, like, big-ass gun through the door that Ooh. this person is ramming at. Sounds good. So why don't you roll, mix it up. We'll give you a plus one because you do kind of have the advantage here. Yeah, brought a ram to a gunfight. He deflects the bullet with his ram. That's a 10. Oh, shit, Woo! yeah. Garrett's killing it with the snipers. Man, I should have had a sniper rifle this entire campaign. <laughs> yeah, who knew yeah, guns were Yeah, we finally found your thing, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it takes a lifetime. It would have been a lot better when you walked into that, like, setup if you yeah. just stayed back with the sniper rifle. <laughs> Turn, turns out Garrett's a stealth archer. <laughs> the uh, bullet just drives through the door, and you hear a, uh, on the other side. Yeah. The one thing, though, is that your sniper rifle does have the clumsy tag. Oh, fuck. It's supposed to be braced against something, right? Which you were when you were facing down towards the stadium. But to kind of quickly turn around and shoot back inside, you're not. So I think just from the ricochet, it like bounces you on your ass. All of your bones. (laughs) Oh, my God. Now it pushes you out the window. Worse than if you'd jumped out. (laughs) (laughs) On a failure, maybe. (laughs) Yeah, it, it bounces you back. You fall to your butt. Do I take harm? Not harm, no, but you're just... You're, you're out for just a second. You had to get up. During those couple moments is enough for the, the second person <laughs> oh. to, <laughs> uh, <laughs> to bust down the door. You see the body of a guy kind of just dressed in you know, kind of black tactical gear that's up against the back wall, blood coming down from his chest. But then you see the second one drop his ram and pull out his pistol. Oh, shit. So, Garrett, yeah, do you not have your pistol anymore? I was going to ask about that. I... I think I why wouldn't you don't oh well, right because I, remember when uh when I took it off his body yeah and it fell when I was trying to drag your body yeah you lost it at the apartment with the Bailey in the Bailey fight yeah hmm. yeah I dropped it while I was trying to rescue well I did rescue. so all I have is my big sniper <laughs> rifle so mm-hmm. I mean I'm just gonna chance it again okay. yeah I'll chance sure. it again I'll use the big sniper rifle okay so we're gonna give you minus one then right because I'm on my ass Six. Oh no. Oh no. 
you try to get back on your feet, but your, your hands are shaking from the impact of the last recoil and you're struggling to get your hand around the trigger. And the guy just unloads into you. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Three harm again, actually. Oof, he does Fuck not me. discriminate. Yeah. Three <laughs> harm. Do I have enough time to like try to use my trauma derms <laughs> on myself? That would be, you know, like you'd be taking time to do that. So it would give him another opportunity to shoot you. Yeah, but. I think you just need to fuck. try to escape. But but first you have to roll harm. Oh, fuck. Right. Okay. Is this a roll high or a roll this low? This is a roll low. Roll low. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> well, that's a nine. <laughs> oh, no. The MC chooses one. You lose your footing. You lose your grip on whatever you're holding. You lose track of someone or something you're attending to or someone gets the drop <laughs> on you. Yeah, I feel like maybe... This is going bad so early. <laughs> we got a couple of good things in there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> bad for you so early. You got two good shots in. <laughs> it's funny because all of these things are currently true, basically. <laughs> yeah. Except for the yeah. you lose your grip on whatever you're Yeah, I mean, that's what I was leaning towards, but I don't know if that's... Oh, um, I mean, yeah. it makes sense. He would let go of his sniper rifle. Mm-hmm. It blew out of his hands. <laughs> to be fair, he probably wasn't going to take it anyway. It's a pretty clumsy thing to, like, try to tote... <laughs> Yeah, you, again, you were, you were struggling to pull that rifle up and get your hands back on it again. And then these bullets impact into your chest. Your arm kind of goes limp on its side and you drop the rifle to the ground. I guess we'll come back to you in a sec. Okay. We'll go back to uh, Bunk and Tiss. The crater maker is just pulling up beside you. You were okay on your harm check, so you do manage to grab the sentry. Mm-hmm. You pull it into the side of the monster truck. Mm-hmm throw it in. Max Q looks at you and is like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> How many people have you pissed off? <laughs> More than you'll ever know. <laughs> <laughs> is the intention still to drive up the side of the uh, stadium? Hell yeah. All right. right. So I'm actually, I'm going to get Max Q to make a hot shit driver roll. Oh, what is that? <laughs> oh! it, it's a move that the driver gets. Oh, cool. And, um, and I gave it to him. So it's plus edge. Schubert, I guess you can roll that for him. So seven. <laughs> oh, okay. Max Q gets one hold and right. he can spend it during this encounter to do one of the following four things. Avoid an external danger, escape one pursuing vehicle, maintain control of the vehicle, or impress, dismay, or frighten someone. So he can basically automatically succeed on one of those things once. Well, the, one of the last two, I think. Yeah, I might want to frighten Nickel. That would be good. Mm, just maintaining or control. At, yeah, just to, yeah, it's tricky to get like that up side. there. You can hold it, right? So you can wait to use it okay. to, mm -hmm. when it matters. So he puts the pedal to the metal. These massive tires just easily climb up the side of the stadium into the bleachers, and you start gunning it towards the box seat where you guys uh, saw Nickel. She opens one of the windows in the box seat there, and the impatient look that she had on the hologram version of her is still there, but this time it kind of changes into a very grim smile that creeps across her face, and you, you see something pop up from behind her back and unfold over her shoulder, the smooth and shiny barrel of an unmistakably advanced and high-tech epistle weapon. And with a thwomp and a flash of light, the weapon fires, and a streak of red blasts towards the truck. See you in two weeks. Thank you for listening to The House of Bob. If you're enjoying the show, we'd love it if you gave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Tell some of your friends or hit us up on social media at The House of Bob. You can also watch all the shows on YouTube if you prefer. Uh, the link is in our show notes there. If you'd like to support the show, consider supporting our Patreon. There's at least 35 hours of bonus content on there, like director's commentary, one-shots, RPG zines, and a monthly blog post. I'd like to thank our existing Patreon members. That's Volt, Tyler K, Tom Inns, Tom Wesley, Mike from Tales from the Glass Carded World, Scooter Emerson, Robert, Ray Kearney, Mark Boykin, Mary Margaret, Luke Conroy, Kieran Duffy, Keith Haddad, Josh Jordan, Jessica, Jessica Colvin, Elias Anderson, and Blucka12. If you've had a name change or I'm pronouncing your name wrong, send us an email and we can fix it. Artwork for this episode was by Jake. Audio production by Alex of Astronomic Audio. Music by John Julius, licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution. And thanks to Hamish Cameron for designing the Sprawl RPG system. That's all for today. Have a great day and roll on. Shot through the heart. <laughs>